So after Mahaprabhu and his associates <laughs> passed away, the next generation of Vaishnavas in our Sampradaya, prominent Vaishnavas, is Srinivasa Charja, Narutam Das Thakur, and Shamananda Thakur. So they, and they were contemporaries and, and great friends with each other. And uh, they, were, they were charged with bringing the writings of the Goshamis from Vrindavan to Bengal. So they, they set out with bullock carts with copies of all of the grunt of the, of the six Goshamis of Vrindavan. So you can imagine it's not like today that you can go to, you know, Rasabi Harilal shop and buy the, the copies of those books or to the, to the Iskon temple, but any book would have to be writ by copied by hand. Uh, that was the only way that it was done. So all of the writings of, of Rupa Goswami, Sanatan Goswami, all of the Goswamis were, were written by hand and given into the care of these three great Vaishnavas. And they, and they were to bring them, basically to bring them from Vrindavan to Navadhi. And, and they were doing that on the bullock cart. <coughs> and many, they had many adventures on the way, we can say. Uh, but mo one of the most significant was there was in, on the way there was a, a king whose name was Birambhir, Maharaj Birambhir. And although he was a king, he was a dacoit. A dacoit means, you know, like a bandit. So he's like a bandit king, if you look. And he had in his uh, retinue some very expert astrologers. And that when any party was traveling through his kingdom, the astrologers would say, oh, that some party is coming and they have rubies or they, have, they could tell from their calculations, this party, they have some very valuable things. And then Maharaj Birambar would send his men and they would rob them. And this way, the, the, the king became more and more prosperous. So, so this day, the, uh, the, uh, his pundits, his astrologers, they came to him and they said, there's a party coming from Vrindavan and they have with them untold valuable gems. We cannot estimate how valuable these gems are. So this is your opportunity to get them. So then Maharaj Birambir did his thing, his men went, and in the night they stole all of the, all of the trunks full of the, the Guru Granth of our Sampradaya and took them to Maharaj Birambir. And then in the night, and in the morning they woke up, all the books are gone, like what a calamity. So, so anyhow, then they decided to um, to split up. So they, Naratam and, and Shriniva, uh, sorry, Naratam and uh, Shamananda, they went on, and Shrinivasa Charja, he went in search of the books. And somehow or another he came to the court of Maharaj Birim, Birim, Birambhir, who, as well as being a king and a dacoit, well, he was a Vaishnava. <laughs> so you can be all of those things as well. And he loved to, he loved to hear uh, about Krishna. And he had some, some pundits in his court who would speak to Srimad Bhagavatam. And when, uh, when Srinivasa Charger came, and he's hearing the, the court pundit speaking Bhagavatam, he, he basically said, this isn't like the proper Siddhanta. What, what he's speaking, this isn't Siddhanta. And uh, so uh, Maharaj Birim here, uh, he said, like, well, can you do better? He said, well, I can, something I can say. And so then he began speaking, Srimad Bhagavatam. And, uh, and everyone was... Uh, amazed at what they were hearing from him and especially the king hearing from him and for some days he spoke there and the king was 
like in ecstasy to hear Srinivas' uh, explanation of Srimad Bhagavatam. And then one evening he told him, I have something I want to show you. And he took him to his like treasure house. And there in the treasure house there were the there were the books in the in the uh, the trunks. And he said somehow these books have come here and I knew that they were extremely valuable, but not in the way that I first imagined that they were uh, valuable. And I think, you know, like you would be able to appreciate what, the, what this is. And Srinivas said, yes, actually they were my books. So Maharaj Gurimbir returned the books to him. And uh, long story short, they continued to, uh, to Bengal and to Keturi Gram. And uh, that festival was as much of a celebration of the return of those books. And it was also the very first celebration of Gora Pranima. Prior to that, they had not celebrated, as we know, the celebration of Gora Pranima today. Now we celebrate Gora Pranima as we celebrate Janmashtami. Um, and that was first inaugurated by uh, Srinivasa Charja, Naratam Thakur and Shamananda Thakur in the village of Katuri Gram. And at that festival, they honored Janavama, the, uh, the wife consort of Nityananda Prabhu, as the, as the guru of our Sampradaya. And she was given the chair of the Acharya and, uh, and she opened the festival and the proceedings and she was given the highest honor there. And, uh, and Srila Guru Maharaj mentions that there are, there are a line of gurus, all women, coming from <coughs> Janamama down to Bipin Bihari Goswami, who is the guru of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, the Diksha guru of Bhaktivinoda Thakur. So if the question comes up whether there should be women in charges, there's your answer. And Guru, and Guru Maharaj also says it is inevitable that there will be lady acharyas in the future. Because that, that is, Krishna consciousness is not about any external thing. Who knows the science of Krishna? Who can give Krishna to others? That is, there is no bar according to gender. And it is an inevitable thing. And that, that was Guru Maharaj's conclusion. Inevitably there will be women acharyas in our line. Anyhow, that festival was conducted there and uh, Naratam, Srinivas and uh, Shamananda, they, they led the kirtan and there's many explanations or descriptions about those kirtans. You know, like so many Mridanga players, so many singers, so many dancers, you know, like it was all, it, was all, it wasn't a free-for-all. It was all completely organized, you know, and when we, when we sing, you know, um, uh, in the Gorati, Mandura, Murdanga Baje, Parama, Karatala, the sweetness of that, it wasn't like some big din, some smash, 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 smash it out, like drown everybody's ears, burst everybody's ears. It was beautiful and unimaginably beautiful, that kirtan. And maybe there were like six or twelve kirtan parties, I, I forget now. But it is told that everyone that was there, who was able to see it, saw that the whole of the Panchatattva, although they were no longer present in the world, they appeared in each of those kirtan groups. Mahaprabhu and Nityananda Prabhu were seen to be dancing in those kirtans with the Vaishnavas. So, what kind of festival was that? We can only begin to imagine. And, uh, and at that time, they, they installed many deities uh, as part of that festival. And one of those deities is, the, is the, de the deities that we have come to see today. And some of them <coughs> remained in uh, Bengal and some of them eventually came to Brindavan. <laughs>